You know, it's just one of those days, I gotta tell you. In the never-ending quest to reduce oil consumption, I'm out here with the Toyota 22RE in the pickup truck. As you can see, I've pulled the valve cover off. And I'm in the process of removing this baffle. So I thought I'd show what I'm doing. I'm, I'm using a 3 8 drill. And it's actually pretty easy. Uh, just center punched all the little rivets, as you can see. And I'm going along drilling them out. The 3 8 drill it works pretty well. Uh, you can see here I've... I've previously made the baffle modification for the LC engineering uh, dual row timing chain upgrade. And I'm chasing down an oil leak with my with my baffle or with my oil can, uh, catch can and my little pre-baffle thing that I mentioned in the previous video. I got the oil consumption down to uh, I think it was ha uh, 15 milliliters which is half an ounce of oil uh, every, I want to say it was like 40 or 50 miles or something like that. So whatever whatever the exact reading was, it equated to almost exactly 32 ounces every 3,000 miles, which is burning one quart of oil, uh, you know, in between oil changes, which it does, you know, it's not too bad, but I think I can do better. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling this baffle off and um, I'm going to, you know, drill these holes so I can put some screw bolts in to hold the baffle back on, uh, most likely. But I want to get under here and see exactly where the oil is coming from. I'm, I'm thinking it might be getting up in here and going down this little ramp right here and heading this way. But I also noticed there's an open area over here, so I'm starting to wonder if the... Uh, the modifications I've made to the uh, oil pump, I'm running a, a higher performance oil pump, as well as, if you look in here, uh, the little rods, uh, the shafts that the rock arms rock on, I have the upgraded LC Engineering ones that have the larger oiling holes, and I'm wondering if maybe it's throwing more oil around inside you know up under the valve cover and I'm wondering if maybe there's a passageway here that I need to address because that's kind of right in line with where the oil uh, baffle kind of PCV stuff is anyway I'm uh, I'm cutting this off just to see what's going on underneath uh, as soon as I get it off I'll follow up here with another segment uh, in the video to show everybody kind of what's underneath and then I'm going to set about trying to get the oil consumption down below uh, one quart, you know, every 3,000 miles. I like to have it more like a couple of ounces uh, every 3,000 miles. So trying to reduce the oil consumption by a factor of uh, 10 from where it is currently. So, all right, as soon as I get this baffle drilled out, and it's, uh, I wanted to mention that with the 3 8 drill, it's pretty straightforward. You just center punch the little aluminum part that's uh, riveted over and then drill and kind of just rock the drill around a little bit and then it, it separates pretty easy and you can kind of see it just lifts right off the little uh, what's left of the aluminum piece there so okay so I've successfully separated the baffle from the underside of the the valve cover and I think as you can see I vacuumed up some of the chips there but I think we're beginning to get to the source of the oil consumption problem so if you look here you can kind of see the construction of the baffle and if you look in in my motor you can see that it appears that this gasket has disintegrated and this is just the way I found it here so you you can see there's just bits and pieces of it. And you can see it appears that there's a lot of oil heading this way here. I, I had originally thought that my, my oil problem related to oil coming up and over here. But actually this part of the gasket, which uh, I believe blocks that little pathway, is, it looks to be largely intact here. And I don't see <coughs> that there's really any pathway 
you know, for the oil to get over here. Let me get some of these gaskets out of the way here. And you know, some of the rebuild kits come with a gasket for this little area. And believe it or not, I was cleaning it up the other day and I, that was the one thing I threw away was that gasket. I thought, oh, I'll never need that. Just kidding. So once we get the gasket material out of the way here, you can see how the baffle set up. So what I had originally mentioned in my other videos was I thought maybe something to do with the dual row timing chain was causing oil to get in, but there's a, a, a sealing lip here that had a gasket as and there's not too much signs of oil going in here. And this also doesn't relate to my catch can where I'm actually catching the oil. And you can see there's really, this is a sealed area over here. So there's not, you know, too much chance for oil to come up around the chain. Jump over here, pass this gasket, get in here, and then get drawn up in there. So I think... The source of my oil problems related to back here and the fact that the end of this baffle is sticking up here I'm gonna guess that oil is clinging on here and because my you know whatever gasket is missing or or not sealing back in this region here that is drawing oil in that way so I'm gonna have to look into kind of what to do about producing a better seal, but I, I think I'm gonna to have to do something about extending things here, getting some kind of better sealing. So I'm gonna take this upstairs to the kitchen sink, clean it all up, and then inspect things a little further. Interestingly enough, let's see here, if you put this all back together, this area here where you have you know, uh, kind of open to the valve train actually does not have a bridge across here except for the fact that maybe if there's a gasket that isn't sealing here. I may put this all back together with RTV sealant or something since I tossed out that one, uh, the one gasket I need. Anyways, I'm going to clean this okay, all up. Okay, well, progress continues. I was looking a little closer at the baffle construction here. So it's actually fairly clever. Um, you can see air goes in that way and it has to come down here and come out those holes uh, same deal over on this side so i've been cleaning everything up with barium and b12 chem tool and gasoline and then here i'm i'm filing these uh little uh, aluminum riveted spots down just using this going real slow kind of you know back and forth little strokes like that so, gotten a couple of these taken down, no problem. And you can kind of see what they look like after you, after you drill them off. There's a little burr on the edge. So, uh, I'll probably come back and drill these with either probably six millimeter um, or maybe perhaps eight millimeter uh, and, and uh, put some kind of bolts to hold the, uh, the back limb. I haven't decided how much I'm going to attempt to modify this. I might take this end and bend it out a little bit. I'm actually kind of impressed with their baffle construction. Uh, I think most of the problem uh, that was allowing oil to get in, you know, into this area uh, probably relates to the failure of the little gasket that runs along this lip because there's a contact spot uh, on the baffle which, which coincides with that. So I uh, I may have to just make my own gasket or uh, perhaps run some RTV sealant here or both. Okay, so we're, we're over here at the drill press and you can see I'm just using a couple of hockey pucks to protect the bottom and level, you know, level things out. And then I have my handy dandy 10 millimeter gauge. So we're drilling down about 10 millimeters on these guys here. I should leave uh, adequate amount of aluminum at the bottom. And then uh, I'm going to probably put some, uh, I'm going to tap each one of these holes uh, M6 by 1 and um, use probably a, button, a stainless steel button head screw or something like that, a uh, bolt, you know, M6 bolt. 
and that'll hold down the uh, the baffle. I still haven't figured out exactly what I'm going to do as far as the gasket. I may just cut my own gasket. So, but at the moment, using the trusty drill press to uh, tap some holes there. Okay, so I have the valve train covered up there, and I'm down here working on the ground because I'm too lazy to clean my workbench. And I drilled out the holes, uh, tapped them with a uh, standard tap, this little guy here, M6 by one, and then uh, I'm finishing them off by hand, each one by hand, with a bottoming tap. And if you don't, if you're not familiar with that, that's just tap the threads all the way to the bottom. And then I'm going to come back. I have to scrounge up some uh, M6 hardware. I was going to order some from McMaster Car, but uh, I haven't decided for sure if I'm going to do that or not, or just try to use something that I've got in the house here. So, anyways, finishing this off uh, by hand, all these little holes, and then uh, been been working on cleaning this guy. And then uh, next up, after I get these guys thread and find some hardware, is going to be. Um, figuring out the gasket situation. And, and the more I think about it, the more I think my issue is that the gasket along this lip deteriorated and oil was being flung directly in this area and and bypassing this whole baffle affair. So I, I think we had lost the seal around this edge is what had happened. And therefore oil was being slung up directly here and then it was being sucked up by the by the PCV valve. So I think once I get this thing uh, redone and sealed, you know, with the, the baffle and get the passageways back to the way Toyota designed them, I, I feel pretty confident that that's going to address the, the oil problem. So, okay, well, while my girlfriend is having a disco party upstairs, <laughs> I am down here checking the clearances on the baffle. So it looks like everything pretty much clears as far as these holes. Some of these are kind of close to the rocker arm, but I think it sits up high enough that I don't I don't think there'll be any problems using button head Allen screws. So it's kind of interesting to see how the baffle system works uh, when it's not on the valve cover. So you can see my uh, my original notion of oil being slung up around here. Uh, I don't think holds a lot of water because there's there should be a seal here with the gasket. Now, if that gasket fails, then yeah, maybe the oil slinging up and into this little area here and rolling down could be a factor. However, there uh, is really, you know, uh, kind of a just this baffle affair is, is involved and then the hose that runs from here over. So it wouldn't account for getting into the kind of, I guess, what would be considered the secondary part of the baffle for the PCV valve, which is back here. And you can see that they have a pretty nice little uh, affair here. They have a trough to allow oil to return. They have a little baffle uh, system. What, what, honey? Oh, sorry, I'm doing a... <coughs> I was just mentioning how you were having a disco party up there. Next time I get upset with you, what now? We're we're, we're involved in a highly sophisticated oh, PCV baffle later. situation over here. Honey, next time you get upset with me, I'm gonna send you that song. Oh, okay. Do you think you're better off alone? Oh, okay. I see a subtle hint yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Why don't you get out of here? All right. All right. We interrupt this message <laughs> for my girlfriend. <laughs> I need attention. Mm -hmm. Okay, get out of here. Why don't you go put me another shot of espresso? No, honey. You already had like three. Okay. All right. Say hi to my YouTube channel. Hello. Hola. All right. Mm. Bye. Bye. As I was saying, Toyota... Okay, bye, honey. <laughs> As I was saying, Toyota has a fairly sophisticated little baffle situation here. Uh, the oil has to pass through holes here and then go over here and then there's a return drain trough Oh, and as far as bending that last piece, I don't think I can bend that out because it would hit here So I'm gonna have to leave well enough alone. I think my whole my whole issue comes down to the failure of the seal between the baffle and the um, And the valve cover so that's that's as my dad used to say that's my story and I'm sticking to it I'm trying to find some Hardware. I think I'm going to use these hardened 
I believe these are 12.9 uh, Harden uh, M6 bolts. Um, I was thinking about you maybe using some some button head sort of deals, but I don't know. I don't think it's worth waiting for different hardware to show up. These look pretty good. Um, I have some large uh, I have some large washers which fit uh, just perfectly on the little area of the baffle. Uh, I finished tapping and cleaning out these holes. Everything looks pretty good. Uh, the, the ones in the front are not as deep uh, because the bosses aren't as deep, so I'm gonna have to stand that off with a little little washer. So I think I'm I think I pretty much got everything under control. Oh, and something else I wanted to show here uh, with regard to this rear baffle situation. Um, you can see the trough there underneath the spot welded on baffles. Um, uh, when I when I originally took this off, that little trough was corroded up. And so I have a feeling that is serves as a return path for the oil. Uh, it was completely full of sludge. And so I have a feeling that contributed to uh, oil pooling up here and being available to the PCV valve to be uh, drawn out. Same sort of deal back here. I had to get in there with a toothbrush and some some carburetor cleaner and clean those out. So I, I have a feeling that may be one of the issues. Uh, as far as the the little washers I mentioned, uh, when this bolts down, these are just some kind of uh, stainless steel fender washers, M6, but you can see how that's gonna go. And then these little uh, cap screws will, will go on there. So I think that'll probably work pretty well. Uh, I'm gonna secure these with Probably some either some 271 red Loctite or uh, maybe 680 green uh, bearing retaining uh, Loctite. So definitely, definitely don't want these falling off and getting into the valve train. Yeah, so I was just checking uh, this. And you can see it has flange areas where it, where it makes contact with these raised portions uh, of the valve cover. And then just I would just I just toss this on here like that, and you can you can kind of hear. You know it it really makes a good contact with no with even without a gasket in there. So I I think I mean all these surfaces make contact. So I think I'm just going to run a bead of black RTV ultra black sealant around all these areas here and then just bolt this sucker back down and call it a day um i mean i think that's i think that's a better solution uh than having a you know than having material in here that is being pressed and deteriorating and falling out and getting soaked with oil so even though it's you know even though it's a thin uh, surface, I think if if you, if you get a little bit of uh, RTV in there, that's probably going to work better than trying to cut a gasket or you know have a gasket in there falling apart or whatever. So I mean, even if you put it together without any RTV. Uh, just the surfaces being so close together, I think would tend to prevent uh, large amounts of oil going in as opposed to having a gasket and having a section missing and having a void. So. Okay, well, I'm just getting ready to use some of this uh, Permatex Ultra Black RTV sealant. Um, and I've marked off where I need to put it where I don't. So I gotta just run down here, not anywhere past there. And on this little section here, just in that little internal spot, but not right there. And it doesn't appear I need to do anything special up there, just come around here. So I'm gonna put the sealer on and then uh, lightly torque that down, let it dry for a couple hours, and then I'll do the final torque with the uh, six millimeter bulbs there. Okay, well you can, you can see the results of the applying the RTV sealant there on that little ridge where it, uh, meets with the baffle. I'm just gonna put the baffle on there, move it around very slightly to smear everything around, and then uh, let that set up for maybe 30 minutes or so uh, 
and then very lightly mm -hmm. torque these down. And then once it kind of dries, I'll do the final torque and that should lock it in there. So I think that's all we're going to need. Um, I'll put the baffle in and then uh, we'll check back here in a sec. Okay, well, the uh, baffle is back on. You can see I put the, the washers in. I flipped the washers over because they kind of, you know, went with the angle of the, the pressed baffle there. Uh, you can kind of see on the edge a little bit where the RTV squ squeezed out. I, I don't have these at the final torque. I just have them kind of finger tight, I guess you'd say. Um, so that the RTV won't completely squeeze out. I'm going to go back and, and run my finger and clean up that, that uh, bead. But when I put this down, uh, it really made a nice contact. So it, I feel like it's, it's uh, got the RTV in the mix there just the way I want it. So Okay, well, got the baffle on. And uh, it's drying. I was checking out with a little mirror there. I mean, this is... So good as you could, as good as you could hope for, really. So I'm real pleased. You can kind of see, it's basically the same routine I do on my oil pan there. So just ran a cloth and my finger along. You can kind of see how it's uh, how it's sealed up there. So I, I think it's going to work. Looks airtight to me, so I think we should be good to go as far as keeping the oil out of the baffle. And uh, the RTV looks looks pretty good. Okay, well, that's a wrap on the uh, 22RE oil baffle stuff. Um, as you can see, I've, the RTV is drying, but you know everything. Everything went on good, made a good seal. As you saw a second ago in the mirror there, it looks like it's going to be oil uh, proof. So I'm pretty encouraged. I think part of the problem was this little trough actually was uh, uh, not allowing oil to get back and the gasket had deteriorated along the edge. And I think that was where oil was getting in and getting locked in there and being sucked out. So I'm hoping now that everything is clean and we kind of have a new uh, clean baffle uh, with with uh, this RTV ceiling around the edge, I'm hoping that this will uh, uh, positively impact the the oil drawn up through the PCV valve. I am going to wrap the video up here, and uh, I'll probably adjust the valves and what have you. But I will update in the description section of the video as time goes by uh, whether or not this has had a positive impact on the uh, truck consuming oil. Um, prior to doing this, uh, it was drawing at about half an ounce, you know, 15 milliliters of oil every, I think it was 40 or 50 miles. So I'm hoping to see that go down to where I'm drawing in only maybe an ounce or two of oil, you know, every 500 or 1,000 miles. So we'll see how it goes. Like I say, I'll update uh, periodically in the, uh, in the in the description section of the video. So if, if you come uh, upon this video down the road, check that and I'll uh, have some information as, as to how well this uh, kind of modification works. So, okay, well, as always, thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to use the section below and um, like and subscribe if you feel like it. That always uh, helps the channel as well as the, the individual videos. Okay, thanks for watching.